You just feed them. Your plants and trees love this. This is like giving them a full dinner right now. Instead of just giving, like water is giving them like little snacky snacks. show you guys how I compost compost tea and some of the ways to add the ingredients for that is all of my fruits and vegetables that I don't eat sometimes things can go bad um, sometimes when you finish eating something then you have leftovers that isn't edible that you can use, which just like this delicious watermelon. And yeah, this delicious orange watermelon. It's delicious. It's yellowish, but it's orange. And Yapa has a different, slight different taste to it, but it's delicious. So once I finish eating this, I'm gonna take the seeds out because there's plenty of seeds in here. I've already dried a lot of the seeds out. The seeds are in here. And I'm sending seeds to some people. Um, I'm thinking about doing something where if you guys want me to maybe send you some seeds so you can try it or something like that, we're gonna have to figure out how we can do this because like I say, my whole channel is free here, so. I have to figure out how to make it so that I'm, you know, that it's fair all the way around the board. But um, at the end of the day, once I finish eating this, then I'll show you the continuation of the compost and compost tea. All right, so now that I'm done with the watermelon, totally finished, we're gonna take that, bring that outside, these are the seeds that I got from today. They're still kind of stuck. They have to dry, I have to rinse them off. These are the seeds that are already dried. These are ready to go. It takes about three good days. Um, these are some tomatoes that I could make something with this, like some type of tomatoey pasty type of thing or something like that spaghetti or whatever but i'm going to put those in the compost also and then we take this bag we take paper towels when we're done um different this is coffee grounds in here and we'll take like i see i have some peppers the stems of the peppers that are in there and that's how we add the things to the compost let's go outside all right now that we're outside so you see how we have this bin right here no holes in it but we do have a couple of big rocks in it so we'll take that let's just sit these things I'm gonna put in the compost. Then we also have this bin right here that we have some compost that we've been composting here. 
So you can put all type of different things in here and you have to turn it every few days. And then when you get ready, you can put it in the ground whenever you want. You can put it in the ground immediately if you want to also. So let me transfer this big bin to this smaller bin right here and show you how I do my teas. Now what I do, I will sit that in there and it has holes in it so it will drain through and that's what makes the tea. Okay, now that I put the watermelon in there, the tomatoes and the coffee grounds and things, this is gonna go towards the bottom and I'm gonna add these things in the other bin that's been composting. I'm gonna put it on top, but I'm gonna break this up because the more that something is broken up, the faster or better it will compost. And I'm not, I don't have to break it up so much right now because it will break down more later on. We'll, we'll crush more as the time goes. So yeah, we could take the pick. break it up and also too with this bin it doesn't really matter as far as if you make a mistake and put an extra hole or two in here while it goes on this bin is fine to have as many holes in it as possible for it to drain out drainage is good and it's important when you're doing composting Okay, so for right now, I'll probably crush it more, but this is good for now. Like I said, it always gets crushed. I, I chop through my compost every now and then, just like this here. You know, you got it in here. You always chop and dig through. And I'm doing this with one hand, so it's really hard to do it one hand. I usually lose two hands. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna transfer this on top of this. Yeah, so like I said, doing this with one hand is not that easy. So this is how I basically dump it on top. I don't do it this messy, but like I said, working with one hand, I'm gonna keep saying that over and over, guys, because it's not a game. So we got grass cuttings, we got weeds, we got all type of things in there. So what I'm gonna do, I wish I could sit it here so you guys can see, but I'm just gonna basically pick this little stuff up on the, off the ground, not the plastic here, not the plastic. All things that break down. I'm gonna put it on top of here and I'm gonna chop through with this, whatever, with the pick. And then I will show you after I do that. All right, so I got the holes out. I chopped it down. And you just take water and put it over top of it. Cause you also wanna, like what happens when it's compacted, the heat is gonna cause it to start breaking down and the compost over time. A lot of times I'll just take compost without even waiting for days or weeks or whatever, and I'll just put it straight in the ground and let it happen naturally. But sometimes you wanna just take a little extra time because this is what makes the tea here. All the stuff that I put in there, all the ingredients, and the thing is you can't really see right now, but there's like little life that's crawling through that's in here. Like things just start, they just, they, they will just come in your compost. And what you wanna do is soak this down and from all the juices, from what you put in here, that's what you feed your plants and trees with. All the, all the juices from this. Is what makes that compost tea. Now I'm not gonna give you guys all my secrets, but this right here will help to 
do some real good nutrients to your plants and trees. Now you can add some things here and there or whatever the case to enhance it. But this right here alone is good enough. There we go. This is compost tea. I set this here so it can drain out and it can drain into surrounding plants and trees. What I do, I try to sometimes just add water to the whole thing and I'll take a watering can and just go and feed the plants and trees because they love that. Everybody, we all have to eat and just water alone is not good enough. Plants and trees need nutrients, they need nutrition, they need minerals. So this will get down and will will fertilize them naturally and organically. Every now and then, you see I let the plants and the trees stress out just a little bit to where they feel like they're dying or going to start dying and they'll start producing some fruit and then I give them a real good watering afterwards. So you see we got another watermelon growing. It's about the size of my foot right now. We have another smaller one right in there. And I'm giving them a good watering. The water comes down, soaks in real good. And tonight, I will give them some of the compost tea. So this is actually four days later from the last time that I filmed. I've been waiting. So now I'm gonna do a little bit of, let's untangle this. Alrighty, stepped inside a little bit too long and this is what happened. But the thing is, roots and things will grow out this far and it's really no problem. It's all about building up the soil. Like I say, this first year of what I'm doing is, is just preparation for making a great year next year. So I basically lifted it up, which was very heavy, and I'm letting it drain out into the plants right now. Not 100%, but it's doing it somewhat. And also, as you see, we have all the way around, we're doing an irrigation system, getting that put in. So we got the majority of that done today. You just have to do a few more connectors tomorrow. Yeah, they're gonna connect a little bit more tomorrow. And it'll be all done. Well, I don't have to really worry about watering so much. And we have these awesome cuttings right here. We have moringa cuttings. We have mulberry bush, the one with the leaves. That's a mulberry cutting I have. Look at this big, long moringa pod. This pod is incredible. Look how long that is. The length of the whole freaking table. That's at least three foot. This is passion fruit. So I'm gonna mail off a couple of those moringa cuttings to my peoples. I'm gonna definitely plant these right here for myself. And it's gonna be a nice little, you know, like I said, I'm trying to have, what do they call it, covering. I'm trying to let it by next year grow over the wall and have some privacy. Since this privacy wall is kind of short. What I normally do also, I usually have like the watering, the flower, I can't think of some names right now and stuff, but that thing that waters the plants and stuff like that, 
um, not the holes and stuff like that, but the thing that you water flowers and things like that. Um, that's inside. My pants and my sneakers got wet, and trust and believe, this compost tea that I make, it has a smell to it. So I have to take my sneakers off. I don't feel like I'm tying them, taking off my socks and everything like that to walk over the carpet. So I'm gonna use this small little cup. And also what I'm gonna do is I will take, see once you take the, let okay, me turn once you take the compost out, then the rest that's there, you just basically add water to it. You let this fill up 100% with what's already there and then you just scoop it out and you just pour it over by the plants and it's basically feeding them this is what feeds it and this is what compost tea is about right here y'all this is what compost tea is about so here we go this is what i was talking about you fill this up Walk over to your plants. And just feed them. Your plants and trees love this. This is like giving them a full dinner right now. Instead of just giving, like water is giving them like little snacky snacks. This is giving them a meal right here. And just let it just soak on in. All right, so mulberry cutting. I kind of like trim down towards the base where roots will be growing. And I kind of, it's about two foot right now. I cut it in half. I got the other part on the ground there. So we're gonna try to do a little something different with that. So I'm gonna dig a hole and throw this in there. I'm gonna throw at least half, at least a foot of this in here. Oh yeah, look how deep that's going. All the way where I scraped is definitely underneath the ground. There's life in the soil. So it's gonna be at least halfway down there. Let's see what this does. Okay guys, I'm back here getting hooked up again from my boy, David Stone. And he, he posted this the other day. It's not like I didn't believe him, but, but to see it for myself, it's incredible. Look at this. You're not going to believe how it goes and goes and goes and goes and goes and go. Like, come on, come on. This is at least three foot tall. Like, it's incredible. Incredible. My man. This is the tree here. This is called Campfire. I planted it in a camp. wildfire just burning and there's a lot down there behind that little building thing right there yeah but it's just burning just to be burning brush fire whatever I don't know what to call it but this is what's happening guys so this is what's going on out in the open the fire in the background it's way down here and it's been burning for a little while and it's like a wildfire that it can only go but so far because there's like streets in between but it's a it's a big long couple of might be a couple of miles long street but in between there's a lot of cement 
and stuff so that it wouldn't be able to go too far. It would just be able to burn in this area. And there's no real businesses or homes over here, but it's burning. It's burning because it's hot.